Okay, good morning, everyone. My name is Mona Aisha, and I am the communications coordinator for MBEC. And welcome everyone to today's webinar on um, how to set up your Shopify e commerce website. Um, this is the third uh, part in our digital marketing series, and today's session is brought to you by the City of Mississauga, presented by the Mississauga Business Entrepreneur Center. So MBEC is a part of the City of Mississauga's Economic Development Office. We are your central source of information and guidance for small business owners and entrepreneurs. So to start off, I will be reading our land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the lands which constitute the present day City of Mississauga as being part of the treaty lands and traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, the Seneca and Atawandiran and wider Haudenosaunee Confederacy and Huron-Wendat First Nation. We recognize these peoples, the Anishinaabe, the Ojibwe nations within the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the Huron-Wendat and all other people who inhabited these lands since time immemorial. The city of Mississauga is home to First Nations, Métis and Inuit peoples. As a municipality, the city of Mississauga is actively working towards reconciliation by continuing to strengthen our relationship with Indigenous communities. We formally recognize the Anishinaabe origins of our name and continue to make Mississauga a safe space for all Indigenous peoples. Again, MBEC is a uh, part of the City of Mississauga's Economic Development Office, and we are your central source for information and guidance for small business owners and entrepreneurs. We currently have free business information and guidance, webinars and workshops, resources and tools, training and mentorship programs, as well as entrepreneurship programs. We are only providing our services remotely, and our hours are from Monday to Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. More information on our office can be found at mississauga.ca forward slash MBEC. To view any past webinars and workshops similar to this one, feel free to visit thefutureislimited.ca forward slash small business forward slash trainings webinar, training webinars and workshops. So we are here to help. Our team of consultants is shown um, on the screen. So we've got John Lamb, who is our entrepreneurship and innovation specialist. You can contact him at john.lamb at mississauga.ca, as well as Susan Loveless, who is our small business consultant. And her contact information is susan.loveless at mississauga.ca. Some more contact information is below as well. Um, for small business support and success, you can contact us through email, which is mbeck at mississauga.ca, through our phone number, which is 905-615-4460, um, or through our website for more information, which um, is mississauga.ca forward slash mbeck. Also feel free to connect with us on any social media platform um, at Mississauga EDO on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. We also offer our business advisory services, which are also provided remotely. Um, some services include the legal services, um, accounting services, business operations, sales strategies, digital marketing, as well as our scale-up services. Uh, more information can again be found at thefutureisunlimited.ca forward slash business advisory. Another program we offer is the Starter Company Plus program. Applications will be opening up next year, uh, sorry, this year in July 2022. Um, this program offers free training and business skills development, a free mentorship and guidance program, as well as the opportunity to apply for a program grant of up to $5,000. Again, applications do open in July 2022, um, and more information on this program can be found at mississauga.ca forward slash Starter Company Plus. Another program we offer is the Summer Company Program. Um, the Summer Pro Company Program is for those aged 15 to 29 years. Uh, who are looking to um, open a business with their business idea. So the Summer Company Program can help you launch and develop your own summer business through free business training, mentorship, as well as the um, opportunity to receive a grant, grant of up to $3,000. Um, so this program, the applications for this program do open in March, 2022, and more information can be found at mississauga.ca forward slash young entrepreneurs. At this time, I will be handing it off to our panelists for today. So we have Sahana, who is our DMS project coordinator, as well as Saleh, who is our digital squad member. Thank you, Mona. And as Mona mentioned, my name is Sahana and I am the DMS project coordinator. And I'm here with Saleh and he is one of our digital service squad member. So what is the Digital Main Street program? So the Digital Main Street program is a program designed for brick and mortar small businesses here at the city. and 
as part of this program, we provide free digital assessment of your business, help to enhance your online business presence, and provide free one-on-one -on -one guidance, resources, and recommendation on growing digitally. So if you are a brick and mortar business here at the City of Mississauga, please feel free to sign up and you can find our forms at mississauga.ca forward slash digital main street. And in terms of our upcoming webinars, uh, today Sally will be presenting on Shopify, but uh, on this week as well, we have a part two on how to optimize your Shopify store. Additionally, we have other great webinars coming up such as how to use TikTok for your small business, how to use MailChimp, and lastly, how to optimize your Google My Business. And lastly, a few reminders for today's session. Audio is available for speakers and panelists only. Camera display is available for speaker and panelists only. This session is being recorded and available after today's session. Please use chat area to offer comments and ask questions. Please put to all panelists. And lastly, today's presentation, resources, and a feedback survey will be emailed to attendees following today's session. Last but not least, I'll be giving it over to Sally, who will be presenting today on how to set up your Shopify e-commerce website. Thank you, Sahana. Share my screen here. Good morning, everyone. My name is Saleh, and I'm a Digital Service Squad team member for the city of Mississauga. Today, I'd like to tell you about Shopify and how it's a great platform for scaling your business online. So here's the outline for our presentation. First, what is e-commerce and how it can help your business? Then we'll go over the key differences between e-commerce platforms and regular website builders. Then we'll highlight the key benefits of Shopify as well as why you should consider Shopify. Then we'll highlight some additional resources for getting started with Shopify, as well as e-commerce in general, before we actually conduct a live demonstration of opening up a business on Shopify. Then we'll conclude the session and open up the floor to Q&A. So what is e-commerce? E-commerce is the buying and selling of products and services over the internet. And the first e-commerce sale took place on August 11th, 1994, when a man sold a CD by the, by the band Sting to a friend on his website, NetMarket. And as we all know, e-commerce took, took off ever since. As a matter of fact, according to Statista, 21.8% of worldwide retail sales will take place over the internet by 2024. Now, if you're a business owner looking at the statistic, the way you should look at this is, is by understanding by 2024, 21.8% of your sales, 21.8% of your sales will be will be made by your competitor over, over the internet if you're not online. So you're losing maybe a fifth of revenue there, which is not good at all. So I hope by the end of this presentation, you're at least you're you're at least you're at, you at least have the inspiration to just get started online, whether it's on Shopify or any other e-commerce platform. It doesn't really matter as long as it suits your business needs. So what are the differences between regular website builders and e-commerce platforms? Regular website builders are generally used to share information over the internet. This information could be in the form of a blog, a portfolio, could be just general company information such as business location, hours of operation, legal documents. On the other hand, an e-commerce platform enables the business owner to sell products and services and accept payments online. So why use Shopify and will Shopify fulfill your e-commerce needs? Shopify is quite beginner friendly. It allows business owners with no web design experience whatsoever to get started with their no code drag and drop website building functionality. It's as simple as just adding sections into a web page, um, such as images, text, videos. And the plans are quite affordable. At just $29.99 a month, Shopify lets you launch a store with unlimited offerings as well as their knowledge base is quite large. You could learn more about Shopify and e-commerce through courses, videos, articles, and you can also access many tutorials on YouTube. For example, you don't know how to add a product. You just, just 
entered into YouTube and you'll have many videos available for you to watch and walk through. So what are the benefits of using Shopify? Shopify is quite mobile friendly. When you create a site on, on Shopify, it's automatically optimized for your mobile viewers. So you're not gonna have to go in and edit, edit fonts and change the sizes of certain things. Shopify does that for you and it's really good. Shopify's website speed is pretty is pretty good as well. Shopify can be known to be quite fast. Shopify enables you to actually manage all your digital marketing on Shopify. And what this means is you can connect your Shopify account to your Facebook and Instagram page, for example, and you can sync product data. So when you go to post on Facebook, instead of re-uploading photos and titles and descriptions, you actually have all that readily available. And this can be done for your Google account, as well as even your eBay and Amazon sellers account as well. So this really speeds up the process and it makes everything organized and, and the transition is quite seamless too. And last but not least, Shopify offers 24 seven live support. If you run into any problems or have any questions, you can just reach out to, to, to Ch Shopify support uh, via chat or phone and you'll have a, a customer service representative readily available to help you. Here's some additional resources with getting for getting started with Shopify. And if you're brand new to e-commerce, I'd highly recommend looking through these resources here and um, and making sure you you understand understand, for example, what makes a great color palette, typography, um, a good logo, a great logo design, because you don't want to be, you know, in the middle of creating a website or building out a marketing channel, but you you built it all based off of a weak foundation. So make sure we get the foundation strong and then we can go from there. Here's the five step process to creating, to just creating and displaying products on your website, which we'll go over in a second. And last but not least, before you launch a website, make sure you, you check off all these items. This will really give your, your website a professional look. And without further ado, let's get started with the, the live demonstration. So we're gonna go over to shopify.com. And start free trial. So Shopify, allow, Shopify gives you a 14 day free trial before they prompt you to pick a plan. Now we're going to enter our store name. So our store, we're going to, we're going to call it MS, uh, MSI T-shirts. Now, in case you're wondering, so, so this .myshopify.com domain actually serves two purposes. Number one, it serves, it serves as the default domain. So when you, when you get into Shopify, you are able to connect your own domain from any, any uh, provider. Could be GoDaddy or Google domains, for example. Or you could actually buy the domain from Shopify itself. So this just serves as the default domain, but what it also serves as is you could you could think of it as maybe your, like your customer ID. So when you when you chat with Shopify and they ask you for your URL, you're not going to send them MSI T-shirts.ca. You'll send them MSI T-shirts.myshopify.com because that's how Shopify identifies it. Create your store. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you selling? Just playing around. Do you want to sell products through drop shipping? I won't be. In addition to your Shopify store, where else would you like to sell online? I'm not sure yet. What is your current revenue? I'm just getting started. So zero. And which industry will be operating in? So MSI t-shirts will be operating in the clothing industry. And here you just fill out your information. So first name, last name address and then you check off if this store is a registered a registered business or not but in our case it isn't so leave that unchecked 
I'm going to give this a couple seconds to load up and we'll be in in no time. There we go. So as you can see, the Shopify backend is quite, quite easy, quite easy to navigate. So let's start with the home tab. So the home tab is pretty much here just to give you notifications and um, any urgent update, any urgent, um, urgent updates um, that, um, you know, need your attention. So in our case, um, since we haven't gone started yet, they, they're letting us know that we've completed zero out of 11 tasks. And here they, they, they mention what those tasks are, such as adding products, designing the store, and adding a domain, et cetera. They also offer some uh, videos and courses and insights as well. So you're not gonna spend too much time on this home tab, but I'd highly recommend browsing through every now and again, just to see if there's any new tips or um, resources available to help you out. Down here we have orders. So once a customer makes a purchase on your store, their information will be will be put here. So what they ordered, when they ordered it, how much of the how many how much a quantity they ordered, etc. Here we have products, which we'll get into in a second when I show you how to add a product. Here you can manage all your customers. So when a, when somebody purchases a product, their information will automatically be put here. As well as you can add your own customer or import customers via CSV. Here you have your website analytics, such as total sales, total online sessions, recurring customer rate. So basically, if you're when you're able to understand what these what these analytics represent, and you can derive insights from these analytics, this will make you that much better of a marketer and a web designer. Because you can see, for example, online sessions. How many people are on your site at that moment or returning customer rate? How many of your customers are recurring customers out of the, out of every customer you serve? So you can derive insights from these analytics. Marketing overview, you can manage your marketing over here. So for example, Shopify actually creates a abandoned, an abandoned checkout email for you. So basically what that is, is when a customer adds a product to their cart, but they don't check out in, let's say three days or whatever it's set to, they'll, auto they'll automatically receive an email and it's branded. So it'll show your business name and stuff like that to basically to remind them that there's a product in their cart. Discounts. So here you can create a discount for particular products or the whole store or even specific, um, specific customers. And you can create them and you can you can add them to um, certain, even certain collections as well. And last but not least, we have apps. So apps are third-party integrations that not only extend the functionality of your website, but your whole e-commerce in general. So an example of an app would be a currency converter. Let's say you serve pro you serve customers in Portugal, and when a Portugal when a when a, um, a customer lands on your website from Portugal, instead of seeing your prices in Canadian dollars, they'll see it in euros. Which is a lot, which is which is much better for them, so they can understand, you know, how much how much this product actually costs relative you know, with their own currency. So that's it for the for the these tabs here. I'll get into these tabs in a second to our sales channel, but first let's talk about adding a product. So adding products is quite simple. So we'll just click on add a product. And here we're going to put in the title for our product. Product description. Product photo. And we're gonna price this at $39.99. So we here we can charge tax on the product. We can add our, for inventory purposes. We can add a SKU number or barcode number. We can track the quantity. So let's say for this product we have thirty in stock. For shipping purposes, we need to check off that this is a physical product. We we can add the weight here. Now for the purposes of customs, we select the country of origin. You can put your harmonized system code. As well as if the product has variants, so so like if it has other options or variants such as color, size, product material, or 
or style, let's say in our case it's color. We can add those options here. So it could be black, red, sorry. black, red, and green. So when the customer clicks on the product, they can pick these variants. So that's our first products done. And we're gonna add two more products. Add a product. Any sex baseball jersey. Here's the description. We're gonna add the photo. And this one I'm gonna charge $69.99 for. Save. And finally, we're gonna add our last product. Description. We're gonna add our media here, unisex baseball tee. And for this product, we're gonna charge $29.99, but we're gonna let our clients know that it's on sale. And it was originally $39.99. So when, they, so when they're on our website and they see this product, it'll show the $39.99 with a line across it, letting them know that it's on sale and they should act quickly if they want it. Otherwise it's gonna to return to full price. So that's how you add a product. Oh, we didn't uh, we didn't update the inventory, the quantity here. Um, that's why it says zero in stock. So now we're gonna tag these products. And basically, what a tag does is basically groups the the products together based on certain commonalities. So, for example, what do these three products? We're gonna cut, we're gonna group these three products together. So, what do they all have in common? They're all baseball related. So we're gonna go to more actions here and add tags. I'm gonna tag it as, tag them as baseball. One other thing we're gonna do is, as you can see here, they're in draft, they're in draft mode, right? So we're going to go to more actions and activate them. So you go to set as active. And now these products are available for us to put on, to actually display on our website. If they're, on, if they're on draft, you can't display them on the website because they're still in edit, editor mode. So now we're gonna go to collections. And basically the purpose of a collection is to group products together based on, on the commonalities like I mentioned. So for example, if you're selling hoodies, t-shirts, jackets, and shoes, and you have a customer who is only interested in shoes, you don't want them to see your whole, you know, all your, your merchandise. You want them to only look through shoes and then you can pick based on what they want. So first let's delete this collection. This is just um, the default collection Shopify. It comes with Shopify. So create a collection. We're gonna call this collection baseball merch. Baseball, we're gonna describe it as baseball merchandise for adults. Now here, collection type. There are two collect types of collections. One, one is where you manually add products to your collection. And the other one is where you automate the process and you, you do it automatically via tags. So we're gonna automate the process because we wanna speed up the, we wanna speed things up and as you know, time is money. So what are the conditions? So the products must match either all conditions or any of these conditions. In our case, since there's only one condition, there's only one, there's only one tag. So it's going to be, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter which one we pick. There's only one condition. So here's the condition. Product tag is equal, is equal to, and if you remember, we tagged it as baseball. 
So when we hit save, you're going to see all three products under this, uh, under this collection. And there you go, all three products are here. Okay, now let's get started with designing the site. So before we design the site, we need to pick a theme. And a theme is basically a template that they're a template that can be customized to suit your brand. So you can you can take you can look at this template and certain and some templates suit your your business requirements. And then when you when you d download the theme, you can further customize it, like changing colors, changing sections around, putting one on top of the other, or removing a section or adding a section, as I'll show you in a second. So actually, instead of going through through here to to explore the themes, we're actually going to go to themes dot shopify dot com. Then we're going to select all themes. So here we have eighty one themes to choose from, which is a lot. So, but we can but we can filter down and we can drill down and get the theme that really that suits what we're looking for. So let's start here. Catalog size. Are we looking for a small catalog or a large catalog? In our case, we only have three three products, so we're going to go for a small catalog. Which industry are we operating in? So MSI T-shirts is, is operating in the clothing and accessories industry. What kind of layout are we looking for? Are we looking for a minimal layout or a content-rich layout? I think a minimal layout suits suits my brand better. And for design, are we looking for a classic or unique design? For me, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. Um, so, but what does matter is the price. So. MSI T-shirts just started up 14 minutes ago, and um, we don't, you know, we don't really have a lot of cash. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select a free theme. So, and this is sorry, here's um, we filter down further. We're left with one theme. So I'm gonna check out this theme and see if it suits what I'm looking for. So some themes have different variations, and basically, a variation is. Like the design will be the same. It's just um, okay. The design won't be exactly the same, but you can customize it and make them look exactly the same. So you'll have different. Like the layouts will be different. The sections will be. Some of them will be on top of each other, or like instead of having an image, like you have a slideshow on top and one one variation, or a slideshow on the on the bottom and a different variation. These ones look quite. These ones look pretty much the same. But since we're since we're in the fashion industry, we're going to start off with um, we're going to use the fashion variation of this minimal template. Let's view the demo store. And what's great about viewing the demo store is you can actually interact with it as if it's a real website. So you have, they have all these products here. And let me let me let me check out this collection here. Looks pretty good. I'm I'm really impressed with this theme. I can click a product. You see, you see the zoom in functionality when you hover over the image. And I can increase the quantity here. In their case, because they have the variants, so in their in their case it's size, but in the case of um, MSI T-shirts for one of the products, it was color. I'm gonna buy this product, and it's gonna take me straight to the checkout. Yeah, and then their customer will fill out their information here and they'll continue to ship. So yes, um, I'm really impressed with this theme, so I'm going to install it for my business. Fashion, at the theme library. Just give it a few seconds to load up here. Now we're gonna customize. So this is the, the theme template. We have a slideshow here, as you can see on the left hand side. If you can see my cursor, you have a featured collection. 
you have an image with text. You have another image with text. You have a map. And then you have your footer here in the bottom. Now, let's look through the sections we have available to us to add into this, um, into this um, design. So we have custom HTML. If you want to insert your own HTML, you can do so. If you have a blog, you can insert that as well. Collection list. So what a, fe so what a featured collection is, is basically, so you see how the, it shows here four products. So when we, when we select um, the baseball merch collection, it will show all the products in that collection. But what a collection list is, is instead of showing products, it will show whole collections. As you can see here, these are collections. These aren't individual products. When you click it, then you get to individual products. But a featured collection will just display those products individually. Gallery, if you want to showcase images, such as maybe artwork or something like that. Image with text, as I showed you already. A featured product, if you want to showcase just one individual product, you can do that. Newsletter, we already have that in the footer, but if you'd like to have it in your web page, in, on your page, you can do that as well. You can you can add a map as this one is already put as it's already here for you. And last but not least, rich text. So rich text is basically is basically the image with text. However, there's no image. So those are the sections you have at your disposal. You can you can oh as well as a video. So this is a section for this theme specifically. Now each theme could be different. Each theme is is different. So we can reorder these around. We can move these around and. And and you know, add some add some sections, remove some sections. So this is what we have at our disposal for this theme. So let's add the products. So we're going to go here into featured collection, and we're going to change this. Change collection to baseball merch. We're gonna click select. So as you can see here, there's an empty gap. That's because here, under products per row, we have four. Now we don't want four because we only have three products. So when we drop it down to three, it centers them and it looks a lot better. Now you're able to add five products per row and you're, out, you're able to add six rows. So if your collection so if you can add, so if your collection has more than 30 products, you can display 30 products under this section. And if you, if you need to, maybe you can add another section to display more products. But in our case, we only have three products, so we only need one row and to display three products. Let me change this headline to baseball. Okay. So you can you can decide to show you can showcase the product vendor here. Now in our case this is quite redundant because I mean this is our website, so the only real reason you'd want to show the product vendor is if they're a third party. So we're gonna uncheck that. We can show the sales circle. That looks pretty good. We can show the sold out circle. Now in this case, because I didn't add any any inventory to both these products, it shows sold out. But we're going to uncheck that and we can decide to center the text below the images or we can keep it aligned to the left. So let's just see how that looks. I think that looks a lot better. So we're going to keep that. So those, that's how you add products. Let's talk about adding a logo. So we're going to upload our logo. Select that. Now they're recommending 450 by 200 pixels, and of course that's way too large. So let's try 200. I still feel that is too too large. Let me try 100 pixels. 
that looks perfect. So we're going to keep it at 100 pixels. Now we can we can play around and we can actually move these items around and uh, we can see what we like. So we can center so we can center the main menu below the logo. So the main menu here, the home catalog and contact link. And we can so instead of left aligning our logo, we can center that. Let's see how that looks. No, I like the other one better. Yeah. So I think this looks pretty cool. You see these divider lines above and below the navigation? We can keep that or remove that. I think I'm going to remove it. Here, you see the announcement, announce something here. So you can announce, you can make an announcement um, or you could remove it. I think I'm going to keep it and I'm going to put free shipping. Above. $28. And you can paste the link maybe to your privacy policy or whatever whatever is relevant uh, based on the text here. Let me save that before. It's always good to keep saving your, your work so you don't lose it. So one, one thing I'm going to show you um, before I show you how to customize the footer is when you're adding a, a product photo, oh, sorry, a photo. So we're going to add this slideshow is not, this isn't, these aren't, this isn't necessarily going to be our products. This is just going to be, you know, a slideshow, you know, maybe showcasing our store and, and stuff like that. So let's say you don't have any images readily available. And um, in my case, I don't, we just started, right? So I'm going to go under free images and I'm going to, and I'm going to type in clothing. This suits my brand. And the thing is, this is these photos are royalty free stock photography. So this is actually completely free for me to use. And um, they're all high quality photos. So I can look through and you know, I like this photo here. I'm going to select this. And you can see it's a little bit dark because there's an overlay opacity. And that's to showcase the text here. So I could increase this. If you increase it to 100%, it's completely black. Then drop it down to zero. It's very, it's very bright, and the the text isn't very visible. So let's keep it back. Go back to 30%. And we're gonna add one more image. And since time is of the essence, we won't be able to go through everything, but um, I will show you how to customize the footer. So here we have the payment icons at the bottom. You can you could um, choose to remove that. I'd highly recommend keeping it to show your customers which payment methods are available to them. And here, if you go to theme settings, we can actually add social media icons. So you can you can see that there aren't any right now. But if we go here to, to Facebook, for example, and go facebook.com forward slash MSI t-shirts. There you go. So it auto populates for you. See, we have a Pinterest account as well. Pinterest.com forward slash MSI t-shirts. So yeah, so, so when the customer is looking through our website and they click on one of these icons, they'll be directed straight to our social media page. So here we can also, we can edit the text here on the top. So for example, sorry. So for example, here, instead of saying links, we can say legal documents, legal pages, or just legal. Save. And that's how you, that's how you customize the, the header and footer. Now, how do you, how do you, how do you um, change this navigation? It's quite simple. 
and due to the time, this will probably be the last thing um, in our presentation. So, main menu. Actually, let me just show you here. So, actually, oh, so you know how we're working on this minimal theme? What you're going to need to do is publish it. Publishing it won't activate it. So, what it's going to do is make it your main theme. So, this Dawn theme that was previously down was autom as, um, downloaded by default will um, be will, won't be activated. So, let's go to navigation. And as you can see here on the head header, we have home, catalog, and contact. So here, main menu represents the, the header menu. So main menu, we're going to remove contact. Save. And we're going to, we're going to add it into our footer. So contact, so yeah, under pages, you'll find contact. Then we're gonna hit save. And when I reload this, you'll no longer see contact up here. Where did it go? It's down here. So that's how you edit the navigation. Um, I think I have a few more minutes. So last thing I'm going to show you so here's where this here's where you take care of all your administration. So your billing, your payments, shipping, taxes. But one thing you one thing which is really great about Shopify is, so most of us aren't lawyers, and um, we're actually able to generate our own legal documents here. So, for example, our own uh, policies here. So, if you need a refund policy, you just create from template, and here you here you go. Here, so automatically it's. Um, Basically, giving you it's letting your customers know that you have a thirty day return policy. But if maybe yours is fifteen days or twenty days, you can change that. Privacy policy you can customize. You can um, auto generate from here. Same with terms of service. Shipping policy you're not able to do that. Um, so you'd have to add your own shipping policy. And. That's about it with getting started with Shopify. And to tell you the truth, I barely scraped the surface. Shopify is, I think with Shopify, it's very easy to get started. However, there's, it's, there's so much to it. And, this, and the thing is, it's actually continuing to, it's continuing to grow. And um, I mean, this year, this year alone, Shopify is already announcing some new updates. And I mean, it's, it really is an e-commerce powerhouse. And, you know, if it suits your business needs, then definitely it's it's worth the twenty nine ninety nine a month investment. Um, thank you for joining, and if you have any questions, I'm all yours. Awesome. <coughs> Sorry about that. Awesome, Salah. Thanks so much for that presentation. Um, so we'll jump right into the Q and A. Actually, so our first question: <clears throat> Can you please talk about domain? Yes. So, um, so basically, uh, a domain name is um, your website address. So, for example, Shopify.com. If I type that in into the into the the address bar, I'll be taken directly to Shopify.com. Or, um, for example, Mrs. Um, the Futures Unlimited .ca. I'll be taken straight to that website without having to go through Google searches. So, you know, when you so when you type in something into Google, you have the first search, the second one, the third one, the fourth one. Instead of that, you will just go directly to that um, to that page. And now you can get this domain. You can buy your own domain off of. There's many providers out there. The, the most famous one is GoDaddy. There's also Google Domains, but you can also buy it from Shopify itself. Shopify enables you to actually purchase a domain from there. Now, a domain it can only exclusively be used by one in by one business. It can't. You can't have multiple. You can't um, have multiple administrators of the domain. Can have multiple owners of the domain. So if I type in Shopify.com, I can only land on one in, on one page. I can't land on two different pages. Um, I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you. Um, next question: um, Can you add affiliate product links on Shopify? Affiliate product links? Yes. There is a third. There are multiple third-party apps for um, affiliate marketing. One I know off the top of my head is Simple Affiliate, where um, you can where a customer can 
can actually sign up for an affiliate program and um, actually promote your products. So, but if, with regards to with regards to promoting another company's product, you can also do that as well. So you can list the product, let's say, let's say you're an Amazon affiliate, you can list the Amazon product on your Shopify store and the link, instead of when they click the link, they go to your, the product page, they actually are taken directly to amazon.com and they can purchase the product and you can receive a commission. So you can, you can, you can do affiliate marketing yourself or you can actually allow your customers or anyone else to do affiliate marketing for you. Okay, um, I guess that's a good segue into the next question. Um, can you provide any beginner tips or pros and cons of selling on Amazon? Okay, uh, beginner tips and pros and cons. Okay, I'll tell you a huge pro. Um, you're able to store your products on in, in an Amazon warehouse. So when you, so when a customer actually is going through Amazon and and um and um, let's say they're interested in your product, when they purchase it, Amazon will deal with packaging, shipping, and labeling. And not only that, they'll remit taxes on your behalf. So that's a huge pro. And also another thing you have to understand is when the difference between selling on Amazon and selling on your own website. Now I'd highly recommend both, you know, but Amazon people, their credit cards are already plugged into Amazon. They're there to shop. I mean, with your website, they have to find it. They have to either, it has to have a, a high domain authority and SEO for them to find it, or they need to be, it needs to be referred to them. But Amazon, their credit cards are plugged in. They're there to shop. So they find your product, they purchase it. Amazon will deal with the rest. You don't have to deal with any logistics. Obviously, that comes with an extra fee. You could also, you could also, um, that is called FBA fulfillment by Amazon. But you can also do the fulfillment by merchant option, where um, you actually have the merchandise yourself, and when a customer purchases it off the Amazon website, you deal with the logistics yourself. Um, so that's a major pro. The con is it can be costly. Um, depending on which product, um, if you're selling heavy, like maybe uh, like, um, you know, heavy merchandise, like obviously it's, uh, the shipping fee is going to take us, take its toll on your profits, but if you're selling, you know, light, light, light products, maybe t-shirts or, you know, um, I would, I would definitely consider it highly, 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 definitely consider it. If you're selling products, definitely consider Amazon. Um, and like I said earlier, you can actually sync your product data from Shopify onto Amazon. So it's really great. Okay, awesome. Um, how do you connect your Shopify to your Pinterest, your Etsy, Instagram, or your Facebook account? So you'd go to. Um, so if you remember, if you remember when I was showing you settings, there was a uh, under those tabs like there was billing, payment, shipping, taxes. There's one that says sales channels. So sales channels basically is not an it's not an app where it, it necessarily ex it extends the functionality of your web web design. Um, as I said before, that is what an app is, a third party extension It's actually, well, it's an extension of your e-commerce because you actually got, now you're using another platform to sell your products apart from your Shopify. So you'd go there, you would, you would, um, connect your Pinterest account to your Shopify account. So you can sync information. So you can, um, um, seamlessly move information between the two platforms. Okay. Um, next question. Um, what's the difference between having a Shopify website and having your own website? So, so a Shopify website, so Shopify is, um, Shopify allows you to drag and drop items onto the web page. Coding your own website from scratch to create your own website. You would have to code it yourself. You would need to know HTML, Java, CSS, JavaScript, um, and, and other programming, other, um, languages as well to take care of the back end, such as like databases and things like that. And, um, you'd really need to be an expert for that. And so what Shopify allows you to do for 29 99 a month is they, they do all that for you. All you're doing is dragging, dragging and dropping. Um, so that's, that's the difference between the Shopify store website and creating your own custom website. Yeah. And I guess that if you were to have your own custom website, let's say you do outsource that to someone. Um, anytime you want to make a change on it, you'd have to contact that person, right? To, to do all those changes. Whereas with the Shopify website, you're free to kind of go in on the back end and change things yourself. So that's another pro as well. Absolutely. Okay. Um, how much does it cost to set up a one, um, to set up a Shopify e-commerce website? So the, the initial plan is, so the basic plan is 29 99 a month. 
Um, there is a Shopify Lite plan, which is nine ninety nine a month, but that only gives you a product page. It doesn't give you like the whole website with you know about us page, contact us, all that. But what you could do is you could integrate that product page with another platform, such as WordPress, Squarespace, and Wix. So if you don't want to pay twenty nine ninety nine a month for Shopify, but because you're using WordPress, which you can even purchase at three dollars a month, but you but you don't like um, WordPress's e commerce because you know it's quite tough to uh, you know navigate you can you can buy shop you can buy you can subscribe for 99 sorry 999 a month with a shopify product page and you can integrate that with your wordpress site and the, the integration is pretty simple you can just you, if you need to do that you can just go on youtube and find it it's, it's really easy it's really easy and if i can add to that um in your opinion do you think the simple plan just is enough like a 29.99 plan is enough for anyone starting off or do you should be looking at any other plans no 100 percent 29.99 if you're if you're not a small business you're like a medium-sized business then that's a that's a different story but if you're just starting out 29.99 a month is more than enough, especially because you have so many integrations and all like i mean it's really endless i mean i forgot to mention this as of May 2020, Shopify announced that they have over 4,200 third-party applications available in their app store. And that's of May 2020, so it's January 2022 now. So, I mean, it's a lot of apps. <clears throat> yeah. Um, what about the Shop Here program? Would that be an option for business owners? 100%. Um, if you're looking to sell products online, um, contact Shop Here. And um, they'll build a website from you from the ground up. They'll teach you how to use it. You'll have maybe two meetings with them. Um, towards the end of the program where, and these are like hour long each, where they'll just show you step by step by step by step. I mean, I just, I just give you a 30 minute basically overview. They'll go step every single detail. They'll record the session. They'll send it to you, um, to get started. Like now this whole program can take even a week and a half to two weeks just to get started, have, um, you know, product photos, product titles, descriptions, prices, an about us page, a logo, and that's pretty much it. And you're good to go and they'll do the rest. You also have um, some, they'll also give you marketing tips and um, there's also some other incentives as well. We'll enjoy that program. Highly recommend it. And just to add to it, um, it is a free program. So um, if you are just starting off and you need some help just designing your website and getting started on Shop, uh, Shopify, the Shop Here program, which is also under the Digital Main Street program, um, is a great, great resources, a resource for you. And um, yeah, we'll highlight like we will highly recommend that program. I'm just going to add the link to it in our chat so that um, oh, if I actually just dropped it in. Oh, you did? Okay, perfect. Um, then you can feel free to sign up. Okay, awesome. Um, so the next question, uh, what, is, what are the cybersecurity measures in place at the back end, which ensure secure payment processes? That's a quite, that's quite a technical question. Um, um, Shopify is known to be very, very secure, um, very secure. And, um, I believe it's hosted on AW, Amazon AWS, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe it isn't anymore. I'm not sure. Um, that is a quite technical question. If you're, you could, um, you could contact Shopify and ask them, um, directly, but mm -hmm. I'll tell you Shopify is known to be very secure compared to other ones. So. Definitely, uh, Shopify. Um, if you're looking for security, maybe Shopify might be the way to go. Okay. Um, another question came in. Um, where would you apply for your HST license or certificate? So, if you go to CRA, um, CRA, um, GS, you can so type in GST, GST slash HST registration CRA. You can go. You'll go in there, and the process doesn't take long. You just um, add your business information, your um, your business license. You have to be a registered business, and then you'd get your HST, GST, HST number, and then you'd, um, and then when you go, like I showed you in the settings, how you have the billing, the payments, you'd go into under taxes, and when you click set up taxes under the Canadian flag, it'll show, it'll show every country has their own taxes, right? When you select it, it'll actually auto populate for each province. So each province has their own taxes, right? So Ontario, Alberta, British Columbia, it'll do all that for you. And if you need help with that, you can contact Shopify support and they'll, they'll help you out. Awesome. Um, and just another reminder that we are here till 11 a.m. So feel free to continue um, posting your questions into the chat. Um, so moving on, the next question. The video portion um, 
how long is the video portion on each video you can add? Um, yeah, and then there's a follow-up question, but we'll answer that one first. So how long is the video? Mm -hmm. um, I can actually, so I can um, like upload on my site. So, so what the video is, is um, you'll be prompted to add your YouTube or Vimeo link. So well, however long the YouTube video is. Okay. So you so basically you can't um for that you can't actually add your own video from like your gallery or from your from your uh from your um, device. You need to you need to connect you need to put your video your YouTube or Vimeo link. Um so the person is asking do you need to open a YouTube account as well? Yes. And what you can do now let's say some videos you only want them on the website you don't want them on your YouTube page. No problem. You can just on YouTube select private instead of public. So it's on your YouTube channel, but it's actually not available to the public. But it still has a URL. So you can put that URL into um, Shopify, and then you can have your video. Okay, awesome. And then a follow-up question to that. Can you post those videos to sell um, those videos for one-time view only on Shopify? Uh, sorry? sorry? Um, okay, let's see. Um, can you post the video to sell, I guess, from the video for a one-time view on Shopify? Um, what you, okay, so now speaking on YouTube, I know there is a way, like if I'm selling merchandise, in my case, MSI, MSI t-shirts, we could actually sell our products on YouTube. So when they click on the YouTube link, they can see our products on YouTube. I'm not exactly sure what your, what um, the eligibility cr uh, criteria is for that. But what you could do is if um, they land on that video, you could, in the, in the description section, you can have links to certain products, uh, you know, certain discounts, discount offers. So it's extra, it's extra real estate to promote your brand and certain products. Okay. So next question, um, once it's established, is it possible to change your theme as your business grows? Absolutely. So what you do is this, and as I showed you, so remember, um, if you remember correctly, um, so when we, we use the minimal theme, right? But initially the Dawn theme was the one, um, pre-installed. So. While we're working on the minimal theme, the Dawn theme is the one being shown to our customers. Well, it wasn't being shown because we didn't activate the site, but it's the, it's the active theme. So what you do is, let's say um, you wanna change theme. You'd keep that theme active while at the same time you're working on the new theme. Once that theme is ready to go, you'd activate that one. And that one is the one going to be shown to your customers. Okay, awesome. Let's see. Um, we don't have any more questions at the moment, but we do have um, two more minutes. So we'll stick around. If anyone wants to send in any last minute questions through the chat, please feel free to do so. We are here till 11 a.m. Okay, another question came in. Um, can you add to some multiple, multiple services that are not really from the same field? Um, so like different, like, so like, um, services and products from like different niches and stuff like that. That's what I'm assuming. Yes. From the question. Uh, I mean, yeah. So, um, in my case, I was, you saw, I was uploading uh baseball, like t-shirts and jerseys. I mean, I could have uploaded cell phones as well. I wouldn't re necessarily re I mean, depending on your business. Um, yeah. So it's possible. <laughs> if you're looking to, okay. If you're looking to create like, um, Actually, yeah. So if you're if you're just looking to, if those are if those are your products, then yes. But if you're looking to like create a marketplace of products where third party vendors and stuff like that, maybe Shopify isn't for you. But if you're just looking to sell multiple of your own products, go ahead. Okay. And um, at the beginning of your presentation, you had suggested six resources that we should check out. Um, I think the person is just asking if we could email them out afterwards. Um, definitely, we we were more than happy to email that into our email that out to into oh my god sorry, into our resource email that we do send out um, at the end of the presentation. Um, and it also includes um, a recording of this webinar, so um, those will be available in the email as well as on our website. Um, yes. Just a quick little reminder, we do have a part two to this um, Shopify webinar on Thursday at 10 a.m. So if you are interested in signing up for that, um, I'm just sending over the link. So feel free to sign up and uh, we would love to see you there as well. Yep. And I guess someone just needs a quick little clarification as well on um, something that you had mentioned. So you said that you can um, set 
um, you can open a YouTube account and set a video to private and then use Shopify to advertise and charge. Is that correct? Yeah. So when you private, when, when it's private, it's not actually shown on your YouTube channel, but it creates the link for you to put into Shopify and display that video on your shop. Okay. And then, and yeah, then like, um, you can add your product links, discounts and, uh, things like that. Okay, awesome. And then um, how do you get the information attached to your Shopify account to get payments? Um, example, Visa or multiple choice? It's really, it's really simple. So, um, so Shopify payments, which is the default payment uh, option, has Visa, MasterCard, Amex, Apple Pay, Google Pay, and all of these. All you need to do is click on setup and just put in your banking information and you're done. Um, Shop, they'll they'll charge you a two point four percent plus thirty cent fee per transaction. So you don't you don't pay an upfront cost. You pay when you make a sale. Um, it's actually lower than their two point nine percent fee um, not too long ago. So, and there's also they also offer PayPal. And they also offer other alternative methods. And um, yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of payment gateways available to you. But it's as simple as just adding your payment information. No issue. And you can contact Shopify and they can help you out through that, that process as well. Mm -hmm. What about um, payments via email? Is that possible? e-transfer uh, maybe because there's a list of alternative payment methods um, it could be uh, I'm not I'm not 100 sure about that no worries okay so at this time we don't have any more questions um, I'll wait around for a few seconds to see if any there are any more last minute questions if not we'll wrap this um, webinar up for today Okay, seeing as there are no more last minute questions, um, thank you, Sally, for the wonderful, wonderful presentation. Um, and everyone, we do have a few upcoming webinars as well. So as Sahana mentioned, there is a part two to this webinar. It's the um, how to optimize your Shopify store that will be held on January 13th at 10 a.m. Um, how to use TikTok for your small business on January 19th, how to use MailChimp on January 26th, as well as um, how to optimize Google My Business on February 2nd. So to um, sign up for these webinars, feel free to um, head over to uh, mississauga.ca forward slash events. And um, yeah, you can find the registration links there. And uh, everyone, thank you for attending today's webinar. Um, see you on Thursday at 10 a.m. Bye, everyone.